He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah for Let us sing one more time. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. Peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. Joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah forevermore. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all I sin. Grace, 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 God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. Our opening prayer, uh, join me in unison. God of the ages, we come into this holy space asking for your blessing only to find that the abundance of your love is already around us. Open our eyes to see the blessings of your creation in the beauty all around us. Open our ears to hear the blessings of your word as it is proclaimed in stories and songs today. Open our hearts to experience the blessing of faith through the gentle touch of her friend or the supportive smile of a stranger, and open our doors that we may become vessels of your blessing to a world still in need of salvation. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. reading is from John 3, 1 through 17. 
Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning again. Last Sunday, we talked about the reflection of David about his sins and struggles and everything. And his reflection led him to confession before God. And now we will talk about the reflection of Nicodemus. Uh, so let's pray. Loving God, during the season of Lent, Help us to do reflection on our lives and on many issues and matters in our lives. And we want to end up with praising you, giving thanks to you, and living joyfully in you. By our faith, hope, and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And there is a saying, knowledge is power. It may be true. Uh, we have seen many knowledgeable people stand on stage in the spotlight of wealth, fame, and honor. So I can list uh, them out. Uh, for example, the late Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, Dr. Fear, and Dr. Travis Stork, uh, the host of the TV show, The Doctors, and Judge Judy, Judge Karen, Gordon Ramsay, the British chef, and so on. We have many of them. And because we, because we agree to knowledge is power, we send our children to the education system, to college or graduate school, right? Yes. Looking at the lives outside the spotlight, however, we may say that knowledge is not always power. 
There was a man on CNN last September. His name is Sean Pleasant, who graduated from Yale University with economics major. He got a job in Morgan Stanley in Wall Street, and later he started a, uh, his own small business. However, about 10 years later, his advanced knowledge in economics didn't give him a success. He lost his business with a lot of debt. Now he is homeless in Korean town, LA. Knowledge may be power, but not perfect. We know knowledge is not perfect, so we always look for the new knowledge. Because knowledge does not take care of each of all individuals. Knowledge is not able to take care of each of us, even though we may have some good knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge is not able to take care of our success. Without knowledge, however, or without knowledge, we may be powerless, of course. We may be powerless without knowledge, and we may be behind the time stream. Imagine the first time you used the internet, a couple of decades ago, right? It was only a couple of decades ago. There were a lot of new things that made us busy of getting used to. So I can give you some example. Do you remember the internet browser Netscape? Oh, yes, yeah, some of you nodded. Yes, I remember too. And do you remember the social media, one of the biggest one, MySpace.com? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see uh, many of you are smiling now. <laughs> <laughs> and do you remember the biggest portal web page, AOL.com? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the biggest email service, Hotmail.com. Yeah, we remember them. But many of them, most of them are forgotten in today's. Most of them are forgotten in today's. And now the new things keep coming up to us. So for us to catch the time stream, we may need the knowledge of them. We may need the new knowledge again, again, and again for us to catch up or for us not to be behind. And when we imagine the new knowledge, oh, please do not think Facebook as the new thing. It's an old one, right? It's in the market, it's in the internet world about 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, it was, yeah, it was there. And the news says that although 96% of the baby boomers use Facebook, only 36% of the younger generation uses it. So Facebook is not a new thing to the young generation. To us, yes, it is still new, but to the young generation, no, it is not. Even though, we, even if we may have the most cutting-edge knowledge right now, the knowledge cannot take care of us, cannot guarantee success or happiness, because knowledge is not perfect. So we may be tormented like the Yale graduate homeless man in LA struggling to have more advanced and newer knowledge every day for us not to be powerless. But the knowledge cannot keep us powerful or successful. And in today's gospel, 2,000 years ago, there is a very knowledgeable man, Nicodemus. As we know, he's not just a, he's not just a Pharisee. Pharisee is like a lawyer, right? Pharisee is like a lawyer at the time. Yeah, he, he's not just a, an expert of the law of the Jewish people, but he's also the member of Supreme Court. Yes, he was the member of the Supreme Court. He was one of the most respected and most renowned men in the society at the time. If there had been a TV show about the law, he might, he might have been Judge Nicodemus on TV, right? Yes. 
such an influential man of the society came to see and interview Jesus on one evening. As soon as he saw Jesus, and as soon as he sat next, next to Jesus, he, he said in verse 2 of today's gospel, Rabbi, teacher, we know that you are the teacher who came from God. We know that you are the teacher who came from God. For no one can do these wonderful, miraculous signs that you do apart from the presence of God. It sounds very exciting to see Jesus, right? Yes, he must have been excited to see Jesus, the great teacher, the new sensational teacher. And there must have been a reason why the renowned man Nicodemus visited Jesus in the evening. Acknowledging and praising Jesus as the teacher from God who does the great signs of God's presence, Nicodemus wanted to learn the other kind of knowledge. He wanted to learn the other kind of knowledge that Jesus had. He needed the other kind of knowledge. If not, he wouldn't have come to see Jesus. And if not, he wouldn't have praised Jesus as the teacher from God. So from now on, let us think about why he needed the other kind of knowledge from God through Jesus. As we know, Nicodemus, as the Pharisee and as the member of the Supreme Court, he knew everything about the Constitution. I can say that in a, in a modern version. He knew everything about the Constitution of Israel, the law of Moses. Nicodemus must have known the preamble to the Constitution established by God on the Mount Sinai in chapter 19 of Exodus. We know the Constitution was established in chapter 20 of Exodus, right? The Ten Commandments. But before God said the Ten Commandments, God said the preamble to the Constitution to Moses. So he says in verse 5 and 6 in Exodus 19, If you, the Israelites, if you keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me the kingdom of priests, the holy nation. This is the preamble to the Constitution. In order to make such preamble come true in the Jewish nation, the members of the Supreme Court, the 70 members of Sanhedrin, must have developed very specific laws with 248 positive commandments and 365 negative commandments. We talked about do's and do nots weeks ago, right? But such specific laws couldn't help all the individuals in the land of Israel to keep the covenant with God, to be the priests of God in God's kingdom, but ended up with judging many of them as unclean sinners. The specific laws made by the Supreme Court members failed to keep the Jewish people as the priests of the kingdom. Instead, it made them sinners. For example, when a baby is born, both mom and a baby are unclean. Having a meal with an alien is unclean. Walking over a couple of miles on the day of Sabbath is unclean. Touching and helping the sick and the dead is unclean. 
So no one is free from clean. No one is free from uncleanness. And this is probably Nicodemus' struggle, and this is probably Nicodemus' reflection on the law. This is probably his conclusion after the reflection about the knowledge of the law. It is not the knowledge of the law of Moses which takes care of each of our individuals to be the holy priest and to be one of the holy nation. Let me repeat again. It is not the knowledge of the law of Moses which takes care of each of all individuals to be the holy nation or to be the holy priest of the nation. Therefore, on that night, looking for the other kind of knowledge, Nicodemus came to see Jesus and to have a conversation with Jesus about the other kind of knowledge. Nicodemus' reflection on the knowledge led him to the conversation with Jesus. Just like Nicodemus, our reflection on the knowledge that we have been striving to earn for our good lives in the world has to lead us to come to Jesus and have a conversation with him. Through the conversation with Jesus, Nicodemus was really surprised. Through the conversation with Jesus, Nicodemus was really surprised. He anticipated the new kind of knowledge, but Jesus gave him the timeless truth. Knowledge cannot be timeless because it is not perfect. We know that we always need the new kind of knowledge again and again and again. And Nicodemus was looking for such a kind of knowledge, but Jesus gave him something more surprising, which is timeless truth. Jesus gave him the timeless truth. When we have a conversation with Jesus, what we look for should be the timeless truth. Not the knowledge of this world, but the timeless truth. What is the timeless truth that we can have through the conversation with Jesus? The new life born from above. It is the timeless truth. The new life born from above. So Jesus says twice, the new life born from above in today's gospel to emphasize it in verse 6, in verse 3, and in verse 5. This is my liberal translation of verse 3 and 5. Before the constitution was established by God on the Mount Sinai, God proclaimed the preamble to the divine constitution in order to make preamble come true. In other words, in order for all individuals to enter the kingdom of God as the priests of the kingdom of God, each of them may not need the knowledge, but each of them must have the, the life from above. To be the holy priest in the kingdom of God, we need the life born from above. For Nicodemus to understand the life born from above, Jesus continued the conversation. Therefore, the conversation with Jesus helps to find out the timeless truth for the new life born from above. For us to have not only for, uh, for Nicodemus, but for us to have the life born from above, we need to find out what is from above. We need to find out what is from above. Jesus says what is from above in verses 13 and 16. In verse 13, he says, The Son of Man is from above. And in verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, who is from above. 
by believing the one who's from above, everyone may not perish, but have eternal life. The conversation with Jesus helps to find out the timeless truth. The loving God gave us the source of life from above, which is Jesus Christ. By believing him who is from above, we will have the eternal life from above. And what does the eternal life look like? It will be the life led by water and the Spirit, just like mentioned in verse 5. Next week, we will talk about the life led by water and the Spirit, uh, dealing with another story of Jesus. This morning, let us remember, it is not the knowledge which takes care of us and gives us a perfect life with success and happiness. It is only the love of God which takes care of each of us and gives each of us the new life born from above with Jesus so that we can live with what Jesus has, the power of water and the Spirit. And when we do not understand it, probably many times we may not understand, but when we do not understand it, let us not give up. Let us continue to have a conversation with Jesus because Jesus will not give up to make us understand. So let us come to Jesus anytime and have a conversation with him anytime. He will teach us until we understand. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for loving us. Because you loved us so much. You sent Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, to save us. Help us to understand a little more about your love. And in your love, we want to be joyful all the time, transcending all kinds of sufferings in this world. And help us to be able to share our joy of salvation by your love with anyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we will sing our next song, Wonderful Peace. You can find it in the bulletin. So shall we arise and let us sing Wonderful Peace verses 1, 2, and 5. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight Roars a melody sweeter than sound In celestial like strains it unceasingly pours Oh my soul like an infinite calm Peace, peace, wonderful peace Coming down from the Father above Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray In fathomless pillows of love what a treasure I have in this wonderful peace Buried deep in the heart of my soul So secure that no power can mine it away While the years of eternity roll Peace, peace, one.
wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless pillows of love. I soar, are you here without comfort or rest? Marching down the rough pathway of time Make Jesus your friend Let the shadows grow dark Or oh, accept this sweet peace so sublime Peace, peace, wonderful peace Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless pillows of love. And let us pray the prayer encounters with Jesus. So shall we pray in one voice? Draw us today into fresh encounters with Jesus, O oh God. Make us servants of love. Others may know how much you love them, and we may know how much you love us. Let us not be afraid of new pastures, whether they be green or brown or parched. And as we pass through whatever the day's valleys, keep our heads lifted up to the mountain from whence help comes. Never let us forget the people Jesus welcomed, the greedy and the great, the bad and the good, the respected and the cheats. Even as the world becomes more callous and chaotic, May we never underestimate your capacity to fashion the miraculous from the monstrous, even to make us a choice masterpiece from the mire and the clay. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, His face I at last shall see, T'will be my joy through the ages To sing of His love for me. How marvelous! How wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Let us sing with a cappella the refrain. 
How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me.